David Opar from the Australian Catholic University from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, my work's in hamstring strain injuries, so we look at researching how to best prevent them, um, but also how to try and minimise the risk of re-injury as well. It's really not necessarily about prevention, although we use that term quite often. It's really about risk management, trying to minimise an athlete's likelihood of injury, because every time, whatever workplace you're in, you'll always have a risk of, of some injury. For athletes who do a lot of high-speed running, hamstring strain injury is, is one of those risks that's inherent to the job. Ultimately, we still need to have a better understanding of what factors might influence risk, but not just limit that to a single factor, but think about the athlete as a whole and all of the factors that might work together. So age and previous history are the common ones, but are there factors that are modifiable, such as strength, uh, that might be able to offset some of that risk? I think it's important to consider that data in light of the fact that it wasn't only age but also being weak. And so if you were older and you were weak then your risk of injury is far greater. But if you're stronger, and we're looking at eccentric strength of the measure there, then your risk is the same as a younger athlete. So there's no definitive evidence as to why older athletes are at greater risk. They put forward things like reductions in strength, but older athletes are typically stronger than younger athletes. So there's something intrinsic to the ageing process that we don't necessarily know about yet that exposes that additional risk, and we're really keen to try and focus on what, what might be able to offset that as well. Everyone's always looking for a magic bullet exercise, and, and there obviously, well, there isn't one, but I think a very good starting philosophy is to try and maximise eccentric strength at longer muscle length but also at, at higher speeds or higher velocities as well. So I touched on rate of torque or rate of force development as probably being an important factor. So I think a combination of, of those factors uh, is pretty important. Uh, so the Nordic hamstring exercise is the most heavily researched and probably the most heavily used exercise for hamstring injury prevention. So it's a body weight exercise that involves a participant just resisting the effects of gravity on their upper body and they do that by just forcefully centric contraction of the hamstrings. So it benefits perhaps compared to other exercises because it actually gets a, a maximally centric strength stimulus. Most people will tend to lean forward during that exercise and it get to a point where they just can't resist any further. There's not many other exercises that we have in the gym that can allow us to do that. It really just takes that Nordic hamstring exercise which is traditionally done partner assisted so a partner would hold down your ankles while you slowly fall forward. Uh, and we just replace the partner with a small rig that has a couple of load cells, really just force measuring devices. And so during the Nordic hamstring exercise, instead of having somebody hold you down, you now have feedback as to how much force the left leg and the right leg is producing. It was born out of necessity more so than anything. If you think something's important but you can't measure it, it's very hard to monitor it, modify it, check, check to make sure that you've had a successful program implemented to try and offset it. So I think the awareness issue and actually have objective data is going to be most important. But there's clubs that use the device as a weekly testing tool and testing screen. And we have a collection of four or five athletes that actually has a look at how their strength fluctuates in the weeks leading up to injury. And I think it's potential to be used for some individuals as a more regular monitoring tool. I think regardless of why their eccentric strength is affected, to see deficits in that strength quality probably suggests there's some risk. So I think to be able to have a tool that's objective, that's easy to implement, so that you've got data available is important. And then if you choose to use it more, more often or more readily, then I think for certain individuals that could be favourable as well.